That's true. We did it. We made it. Yes. Yes. Welcome down. Lucas, under. welcome. Hello, Who's here? Lovely Finally. To you. Chris Hi. Vibes. Chris Vibes. Chris Vibes. Oh, right. Sweet. Oh, Chris yeah. Vibes. It's pretty Yeah, well, the vibes are pretty crisp too. Yeah. And honestly, you guys have good crisps over here as well. So, oh, yeah. yeah. That's right. Well, you we call them crisps. crisps. We call them chips. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. mind blowing. It's, it's yeah. the little details that make a huge difference. How's this right? They don't call them crisps, so, so <laughs> struggle to settle in. Never going back then. Yeah. Um, what is the most Australian thing you've seen since you've been here then? And you can't say koala because I saw you got the photo. Yeah, the yeah, we had the, we had the koala. Um, I think the, the most Australian thing is the excessive use of the C word. Like, I, I, I'm a big fan of it myself. Back <laughs> we don't use that in the channel. No, no, it's, no, 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 no. It's, yeah, it's the one that hey, we won't do. I self censored then as well. Yeah. I, I just well think done, yeah. Good. But, like, I love the way you're either a good one or a who one? Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, yeah. yeah, okay, well, you're either a good one or a shit one. <laughs> yeah. But I can't believe you have to be one. Yeah. You know, like, I used to be everyone so is so anti you know? that word, too. Yeah. Like, when it, it's so abrasive. It is. And yeah. I feel like the English make it kind of cheeky. Really? No, yeah. you guys make it cheeky because you use it all the time. And you slant, France, yeah. The thing is, you yeah. slant the vowel as well. I was like, going to say, it's, it's the like you don't say it how it's like spelt. It, it's but it feels like a slang word rather than yeah. like the word. Like the e UN, the un, is like sharp in the English language. You know? <laughs> yeah, we kind of it's get away with this. Like, you can't believe it. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, it has well, a lot. No. Thank you. Yeah. Thank well, you. Because well, well. I know, like, when the Americans use it, like, it's. it's only oh, it sounds ever, like being punched in the face. Yeah, it's only so ever derogatory. Yeah, and it's like everyone in the room looks at you kind of vibe. Yeah, for sure. But, uh, anyway, that's. that's the, you guys are killing it over here with the C word. Come <laughs> yeah. on, we made it! Everyone keep dropping C bombs. That's what we call them, C bombs, so yeah. feel free to use that. Cool. Um, yeah, so first time in Australia. Oh, how's it feel to finally be here? Insane, man. Yeah, it's, it's a weird one because, like, as a British person, you have this kind of like kindred relationship with Australia because you know a lot of the culture is the same. Yeah. And you know, like, I feel like it's. It's the def yeah. It's definitely the most similar kind of culture and type of personality really on the world stage. But you've obviously got the issue of like it's by far the perfectly furthest yeah, away location. Far yeah. Away yeah. yeah. So it's like funny if Australia was anywhere. I know. I know it sounds dumb because obviously it wouldn't be. But if Australia was anywhere near Europe or if it was in Russia or something, I'd probably come over like two or three times a year for holidays because it's just so vibey and so. It's different, but it's not, you know? You need but to come when we're not in winter, too, because... I know, I can't I believe saying, we... I was in London yesterday, and the weather oh, difference... Oh, wow! Oh, yeah, I literally okay, yeah, good for you. The, the, the difference is the same. Like, yeah, it's the same yeah, temperature. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I didn't go anywhere. Man, yeah, I, but even then, it's nearly summer over there. That's what I'm saying. Like, come here in summer, winter, and summer, then you can yeah. really Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll feel the difference, yeah. Although, playing a set in the summer heat's a different thing altogether. Oh, over here. Yeah. Absolutely horrible. Middle of summer like, there is like 22 degrees. Yeah. And they're like all shirts off. Yeah. I saw a guy yesterday in London <laughs> walking without a shirt on and I had a hoodie on. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, whew, a bit chilly today. He's just tits out. Tits out? Yeah, he did have yeah. When the sun, you know, when the sun comes out, everyone's tits are out over there. Yeah, for yeah. sure. But, yeah. Well, it's, it's also been like fucking horrible here, like the last few months. Like mm. it's been the wettest season we've had in so long. Like, 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 torrential. Oh, like, yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen a lot of stuff about like, just um, obviously, I mean, you know, it says a lot that in the last two years you've had to worry about like fires and floods like that, you know what I mean? And then so, a giant pandemic right in the middle. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, the, the other C word. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. How, how, how does it feel like sort of now getting on planes and going back around the world? And is, well, it, is there any apprehension, any fear? Um, first and foremost, we just come off an America tour and that was our first international tour ever. And oh, then this is first, really? Yeah. yeah, so yeah, so like Jesus. in the last two months we've done America and Australia for the first time. You guys oh, released the last time just before the pandemic, right? Was it 2019? Uh, no, it was, it was uh, yeah, so we released our debut in 2019. Yeah. And then we were supposed to go to America with Beans and Ocean and our visas got denied, which was like a big thing. It was like proper crushing. And then in 2020 we recorded our second album and then we dropped in 2021. Okay. We, it was basically like, we, we essentially recorded it like just as the pandemic like was happening or just a, it like literally was the last week and we came out and it was like locked down you know yeah so uh, and then we had it for a year and we were just like we need to just this hit this is but painful to hold on to it yeah, now for so long yeah so so we just threw it out there not anticipating any sort of touring it, it, even in the uk you know like we just we we didn't know what the hell was going to happen with the album but we just knew we didn't want to just keep it locked up any longer you know so for us now being able to do 
international touring for the first time post pandemic you know doing places we've never d been to before like mm. I personally I've never even been on holiday out of Europe you know so going yeah, to right. LA oh. or Texas or wherever and now going to Sydney and Brisbane and, and Melbourne and stuff it's like these are like places you grow up your whole life reading about yeah. you know and now I'm like playing shows and people are singing along in those cities and, and so to cool. think that I didn't even know if I'd be able to play Cardiff because of yeah. COVID. And, and now on, I'm, you know. Yeah, and on that, like, the whole sort of, like, wanting to go to places and people people are singing along, do you think that it was almost kind of like a little bit of a blessing in disguise with the whole pandemic thing? Because, like you said, you've come out here, the crowd's been great, everyone yeah. knows who you guys are, and you've got everyone singing along. It's because there was such a desire and a need for, for music and content while everyone was locked inside, everyone's just gone out and found all these bands that they love and have become so familiar with their music. And it's kind of like it almost did a little bit of the groundwork for you and yeah. you've just been thrown into it now. Yeah, and I think the, the, the thing is, I always tell this to people, I think people are starting to realise it now as we're kind of venturing out of where we, we're from is like our live performance is just different to our, our recording stuff, you know, we're a lot, not like heavier, you know, because we're not like archetypally a heavy band, but there's just so much to our live performance. Mm. I, I feel like, you know, it's, I'm so glad that people have had like two years to listen to you know, Gravity and Birdcage and then and then the, the album as well, you know. And then now they get to experience us for the first time as like a completely second kind of wave of, of our band essentially. Yeah. So. You touched on something that you're not like an archetypally good word that I can't get out there. <laughs> <laughs> you're not a heavy band as yeah. such. What's it like being on tour with such a heavy band? Because yeah. that's such a really cool dynamic that Jack talked about when you guys announced the tour. He was saying yeah. like it's sick to be able to bring you guys out and have like that dynamic. Sure. How's the response been so far? I find, you know, um, in our scene as musicians and as consumers and, and fans of music, you know, I find a lot of people are drawn to the humanity of the music. It's, it's not really mm. about the genre. Like, I could listen to, um, like, Hate by Thy Heart is Murder is one of my favorite albums ever, and then, like, I could listen to, like, Radiohead. And, like, as long as they evoke similar emotions or similar levels of emotion, yeah. I don't really care how I get there. And I think a lot of people like that. Like, you, you know, you, You'll find a lot of people who like the Wonder Years, and then they also like. Um, Slipknot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Architects. Yeah, 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 exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah, precisely. <laughs> and that's the point I'm getting at is why do you like those two bands? Because underneath the, the message is pure, it's real, and it speaks to the hum human element of all of us, right? You know, yeah. regardless of the genre. And I think, you know, when we come out here and we play shows with Void, and we just did a tour with, like, you know, Thornhill, Dayseeker, and mm. Caskets, and, you know, we play with bands. But don't sound anything like us. I think as long as the intent is is mutual, it yeah. doesn't really matter. And I think a lot of those people feel the same way as well. I think it's um, a good way of just getting other people to discover you maybe wouldn't have necessarily been drawn to the music. Cause yeah, yeah. Sometimes dude. on those tours, it's all heavy, all mm -hmm. the same. Yeah. Whereas you might get an audience here that's like, oh fuck, that was sick. I'll go listen. For sure, to for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I, I, like I said, the live aspect is so important to our band. Like I go out there and I pour myself in, and, and I like. And not to not to you know sound like whatever, but like I I go out there and I know even though I'm singing like I go harder than ninety percent of screamers out there. Yeah, and I feel like I, I like last night it literally happened. There was a guy stood there with his arms folded like staring at me like with just like you know and I was just like I'm gonna make you clap by the end of the set, bro. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna make you like you know because I'm gonna work for you, bro. Like I'm yeah, like I, like, I, I find like a lot of the time people are like just stubborn about genre, you know? Yeah. And it's like, who cares, bro? Like, you know, if yeah. I said, what's your favorite, who, you know, who have you been listening to in the last few years? You'd probably say Architects, you'd probably say Sleep Token, Bring Me The Horizon, all these loads of all these bands or whatever, you know? But I say, who's your favorite band? I don't know, it could be Bon Jovi, it could be ACDC, it could be Paramore, it could be My Chemical Romance. And I think a lot of the time, it doesn't really matter. It's just who is doing it the best. It's so funny you, you, know? you pour yourself in everything you do, because everything we do, Johnny does a really poor effort. So that's, <laughs> that's so cool, that's really nice. That's good. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think like when you said like there was a guy standing in the front row, row with his arms crossed sort of thing, it took me back to when we were chatting with Slowly Slowly at Full Tilt. And we sort of said the same thing because they were on the main stage and like yeah. they were with bands like Thyardi's Murder and, and, yeah. and it was sort of like, do you do you do you like that challenge? Do you like going out oh. there and saying we're on a heavy bill? Yeah. Let's really turn some fucking heads here and say this is this is why you should pay us attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I the, the challenge is the word there because like I. I'm proud of what I do, I believe in what I do, I'm, I'm, it's the only thing I'm good at, you know, and I, and I think to myself, when I go out there... You're very handsome. Oh, <laughs> thanks. Don't man. say yourself short. <laughs> Appreciate you. Um, but yeah, it's like, I go out there and, and I know that, like, it's my duty to work for these people. Like, if they, if they don't get it, 
but you don't you don't have to get it, you know. But like, or you don't have to like it, but at least try and get it, you know. Appreciate it's one it. of those yeah. Things, yeah, and it's it's one of those things where it's kind of like, you know, if I can get out there and, and I don't have to be your, your your cup of tea in any way, but if I can prove to you that I'm putting the effort in and I'm working hard for it, and like we just did a tour with Funeral for a Friend. Oh, and like, God yeah, I mean, it's so you know, good. I, I, yeah. I, I, I was like, these guys are definitely going to be funeral fans, you know. Yeah. And like, but nobody in that crowd is there to watch contemporary new upcoming bands. No, nobody is. There. They're there to watch the, the, the you know the, one of the, the fathers and classic pioneers of the scene. Exactly, yeah. man. And and I have no qualms with that. I, I I completely understand that. But going out there every night and looking at that crowd and knowing everybody in that room is like a, a target and someone that I can try and convert in some way. That's so inspiring, you know. Oh, yeah. That's like. It's, the opportunity is inspiring. Yeah, and like this is the thing with the like. Obviously, there was a big boom in that scene, like where yeah. bands like The Used, Funeral for a Friend, Thursday, Poison the Well, Thrice, yeah. all those bands became huge, and the scene was so vibrant and so massive. But there was always this kind of weird rivalry between like the emo, the punk, the hardcore, the mm -hmm. metal, and I think that's like when you play with someone like Funeral for a Friend, you're still getting the crowd that, for a lot of the part, has that mentality. Yeah. I think now there's less of that. I think yeah. now there's just like we just want you know, music that's not disingenuous, that's real and honest. It's like, literally, driven. like I said earlier, man, I think a real through through thread of what we do in this scene, regardless yeah. of the bands, you know, like, uh, for example, us, Loathe and Sleep Token, we all share the same manager. And like, you know, we could, we could play a show together, the three of us, easy. We're mm. all very different kind of yeah. directions. But I think, like, back to it, the intent is, is the point. And I think we're at the stage now where there's so much music, there's so many bands, it's so easy to make music now. Yeah. I think yeah. people, are, are, musicians mostly, at least anyway, are, are, like, scratching below the surface and just thinking, that's cool, but, like, why are they doing it? Who are these people, you know? Yeah, 100%. How yeah. was the experience of playing the new music for the first? Like, was the US tour your first time playing the new stuff? No, so we were really fortunate. We did have we did play a lot of shows in the UK. Oh, like, forget the UK. Yeah. Just, just like, fuck it, we're yeah, open. Yeah, 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 come on. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so we did... Um, they were sporadic though, you know, we did the download pilot, which was kind of like the first Wicked, show yeah. back, which was insane. And then we did Red in the Leeds, we did Slam Dunk. Uh, we did a tour with Creeper. Oh, we did our own headline run as well, you know, so we, we did... Yeah. So we, no, did, we did that, the... Only on 32. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Casual, yeah. Like, <laughs> a year of touring. <laughs> yeah. um, but, you know, and it will be approaching a year since we kind of started rolling back out, you know. But, um, so but yeah, like, to answer your original question, this, um, it, it's... I think it had been so long since I'd written those songs. Like, not only had I recorded them in April 2020, but, like, I'd written them. 2019 yeah you know? and then I'm going out in the summer of 2021 mm. and it's like I don't even recognize who these, this guy is who's written these songs you know and I need to try and interpret them in my own yeah. way is and that is that a strange thing or do you find a maybe even a new connection to what you'd written honestly and this is the worst analogy ever but like you know when you wake up after a night out and you look at your phone and you text your mate and you're not embarrassed of what you've done yeah because that's never happened. <laughs> Ever. I'm always embarrassed. We've had this chat before. I'm just like, like not now, obviously, but back in the day, I was like, oh god, why? You're Man, yeah. But anyway, the, the few times that it does happen, you know, you you tr you gotta trust your subconscious sometimes. Yeah. You gotta trust who you are and not remember every reason and every purpose you've done things because you you just you know you've got to rely on who you are at the bottom. You know, and and I picked it back up after like a year and a half off, and I remember singing it and being like really proud and inspired in, in a, the least cringy way possible by myself because I was like man like I still believe in the things that I wrote all those years ago yeah, yeah. and like and that to me says that like I'm doing right by myself and like I said as long as I'm doing right by myself like there's nothing more I can really do in this in this music industry. I'm so excited to watch you guys yeah. play now That's yeah. I, the enough. first song I heard and not to blow smoke up your ass the no, first no. song I heard was, was Wilt cool. and I was man I was just like who the Fuck is this band like? <laughs> it's, it, it had it had everything that I wanted. It had that sort of that that grit. It had that emotion. Yeah. It had that sort of like it was guitar driven and all that yeah, sort of yeah. stuff. And I, I just think that with you guys, the way that you work so well between two bands, you know, two heavy bands, is just yeah. because you are that bridge yeah, between a lot of sure. a lot of these bands, and it, it's it gives something people something to grab onto. Yeah, thanks, man. And like I think you know there was a really famous interview, or like I think Corey Taylor said it before, where he was like. Um, 
you know, the, the heaviest song he ever wrote was uh, was Bother by Stone Sour. You know, mm. it's, it's not like it doesn't have to be heavy to be heavy. You know, yeah. I'm like like you said. You know, I think that's the. But yeah, Wilt, Wilt man, it's like uh, it's one of my my proudest moments because it's like, I just think. It's just one of those things where I just, we just tapped into something and I'll just be proud of that forever. But thank you for checking out no, the song. Because that, that, that song was like the last song on the album. Yeah. And it was like, it was not a single. And like somehow it's still in our top five most played songs and stuff. So yeah, like, that's strange. Because I don't know how it was the one I heard. There. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's it's, really, it, it really, really, I came across that myself too. John introduced really, yeah. me to you guys. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it was like a, after the fact that I kind of came back, it was like, I've been listening to them for a while without realizing oh, cool, they had your yeah, yeah, playlist. Yeah. And that was one of the well, songs. So that, I don't know how it happened. That's the crazy thing I'm finding on this tour is um, like our song Afterlife is just like, dude, like it's it's, it's just like a bit yeah, blown up. I can't, it's like it's it's on like 12 million streams mm. on Spotify, and that's insane. Like that is I, honestly, well that's a frightening number, you know. And like, but every night we play it, and like I can see people realize that they know the song even though yeah, they don't know our cool. band. And like, it's kind of a weird aspect of this kind of. Spotify playlist world that we live in now where like you know you hear so back in the day you'd hear it on the radio or whatever but you might not know who it is or, or whatever yeah. you know and it's like it's kind of you know whether, whether you were for a run or whether you're on a train or whatever it's like you don't have to look at your phone every three minutes to check who is on the playlist a lot of the time um, so so that's been a very interesting part of coming back to touring is I feel like I have watched the industry change now you know like Afterlife has come out in this Spotify world Mm. And we've started playing shows, and I'm, I feel I honestly feel like I'm covering another band when I play that song because it's like yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. climbed to just this fucking this level, man. Yeah, as long as you don't get sick of it, or yeah. too sick of it, <laughs> oh, you will always get sick of every, every yeah. song you ever write. But um, yeah, so uh, yeah. Someday. So you guys have you guys have played with like so many bands. You just rattled off a whole bunch of bands that you played with, even just now being back on tour and stuff. Mm. Who's the bucket list band? Who's the band that you guys would love to support? It's tough because you gotta look at it in loads of different ways, you know. Like I think, like who would we be best with on a tour? And like, no, no, who do you want? Like, who yeah, do I want? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So thrice, are like my. Oh, Johnny yeah. oh. oh. White himself. <laughs> Favorite band of all time. Forever. Same, bro. Like yeah. I mean, they're up there with like Radiohead, like you know. You I, guys I both feel like, like thrice tattoos in your arms. Well, my awesome. my whole sleeve is basically based on Red Sky. Ah, so, oh, yeah. dude, yeah. So that's the obviously the V two. The V two. Yeah. Best album but of all time. It's my favorite album. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's oh, I'll see you guys later. That's been just pretty good. It's, it's just it, it breaks my heart, man, because we we see eye to eye on so much music, yeah. and it's just it's the one band that he can't seem to get into, and it's it's so hard being a Thrice fan to mm-hmm. try and explain why they're so great. Yeah. And yeah. You should have been on the the brand new thing. Yeah. Yeah. I was. Team brand new. Okay. No, no, they're yeah, the same yeah, yeah. era. Well, yeah. no, no, they are they, yeah, they're they're the same are. genre. Yeah. But that was. How old are you? I'm 27, so I'm older than so. That's so wild because you're so much younger than both <laughs> of us. Well, he, he's a kid. Um, <laughs> but like, I felt like I was a bit younger and I was way more into like the emo. Mm. And so brand new is it for me? Okay, yeah, yeah. I discovered yeah, yeah. brand new from the get go, and so that they were the band that I like grasped hold of. Yeah. And I didn't give Thrice enough of a go. They're both insane, though. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it's it's playing you so much. Yeah, I can appreciate it. It's yeah. just not. I, for some reason, I haven't been able to get behind it. I do think as well. Like you, there are just bands you just don't click with. Like for me, I will say if if I, I'm sure you've you've forced him enough to listen. But the 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 thing that got me into Thrice was I knew Image of the Invisible was like a single, yeah. and I don't know why I just didn't listen to it. I started the album on Between the End and Where We Lie, and oh, um, okay. and we're hearing that. Yeah. And that gorgeous fucking like piano <laughs> tone, yeah, yeah, and just like oh, and I'll, I'll never forget that day, just sitting and pressing play, and just being like, whoa, where's this band then? Man, yeah. it's it's funny, man. We'll get off the thrice in a second, yeah. but <laughs> being from someone who listened to them from when uh, Illusion of Safety came out, and then Artist, yeah. when Fisu came out, Dude. I went and listened to it at a record store because they were still around then, and I listened totally to it through gone. once, and I was just like. I don't, no, I'm not buying that. Mm, and I okay. didn't buy it. I didn't Whoa. purchase the album until like three months after it had come Yo, out. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, and now and, it's my favourite album. And time. that's, uh, one more thing about Thrice. Uh, and I you guys like, go, I'm happy, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and you probably did it the same way I did, but obviously, like, as it was happening, like, I yeah. kind of retrospectively got into them. But, like, I grew with them. Yeah. Like, like, artist, and then Vizu, and then the Alchemy Index, and then, like, oh my god, bro. And, like, but I felt myself, like, growing up. Listen with to that band. Yeah. yeah, and like, yeah. it was cool. So, anyway. If anyone out there likes brand new, just send me a DM and I'll talk to you because uh, I seem to be the only one ever. <laughs> Every band we talk to is like, Thrice? And he just, 
just me sitting. No, they, they, they are very on. influential and they are fantastic band. Anyway, okay. it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a breakdown interview if we didn't ask some Woodja Rabbers. Oh yeah, right? Ooh, we have to do this. Nah. Yeah, we've got them up here. We've done enough of them now. We just got to ask the important ones. Yeah, right. like the important ones are: Would you rather play a set? Right, starting dry in wet socks or wet underwear. You have to put on the wet socks yeah, or yeah. wet underwear. Oh man, it would be it would 100% be socks though. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I feel like I move around with my feet a lot, but like I feel like a wet crotch would just throw me a whole set. 100%. Fair enough. Dickhead over here <laughs> is like, wet underwear, I'll piss myself anyway. <laughs> I never said I'd piss myself. I'm a yeah. heavy set and I'll sweat. Uh, yeah, the sweat. I get the yeah. sweat thing. Yeah. Yeah. I just think, yeah. I'm, I don't know why, man. I'd just be No, mad. you're right. Just, no, I don't know why it's flooded. Yeah. All right. Okay. Star Wars or Marvel? Marvel. If you could be in one. Yeah. Ooh, and no. who would you be? Oh, man. i got to be honest. Oh. So I grew up on Marvel. Like, I, I, my, I had my first comic when I was eight. And like I, it was Avengers issue number fourteen, and I've just been like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, cool. I like that. If you want to talk about Marvel, we can talk about Marvel. but um, and I still read comics. Like you know, every every day when we pull up, I'll type in nearby comic shops, and I'll see if there anywhere's nearby. So, nice. so uh, the answer will be Marvel. Yeah, you know, but I, being a Jedi is like dope as hell. Like, yeah, right. Because I, f I find like everyone, every whatever is on the same move set. It's kind of like cooler. If it's like, dude, if, if you're like Hawkeye, if I said you're in the MCU, be a Hawkeye, mm. it's like, don't, that sucks, right? You know what I mean? But like, I like Hawkeye. You like Hawkeye. No, dude, so Hawkeye was my favorite character growing up. I just think oh. Jeremy Renner screwed him. Okay. And like, I don't think it was him, I think it was the way it was written. I'm not going to put the yeah, blame on yeah, him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I liked like, him in other things, and yeah. I don't want to like, Shame him as an actor. Yeah. I think it's the way they're written. Yeah, the first film did like he wasn't really a character. Really. No, he was a but, like, My favorite thing about him in the comics was like he was the normal guy. Yeah, he was the you in the team. Like he was just randomly really good at shooting a bow. But like you know, I I really like related to him as like a character. Okay. And then when they like threw him in and he was just this like cringy guy, I was just like a little bit of a comedy on the side. Yeah, and he sure. wasn't even. Like you know what I mean? Like oh, if someone's calling you, not. Now see, I think I'd be, I'd be, oh, I'd be Deadpool, man, because I'm pretty funny. You look not, great I'm not, in not, not, not great to look at without a mask, and you can't fucking get rid of me. I've tried to kill him so many times. <laughs> Just keep coming back. Uh, all right, what else? What else we got? Oh, would you rather do? Would you rather uh, festivals forever or your own shows forever, like venue shows forever? Headline tours. Yeah, you get to headline. <sighs> It's tough because generally the ratio of festivals to headline shows is like madly different, you know. Like, like if you look at like a year's schedule, you'll do like one festival show for every ten headline shows, really. Mm. You know, yeah. Anything about it. so if I could play like three hundred sixty-five of any shows, it would be a festival show. Cool. But um, I don't. I don't know if I'd rather have. I'd. I'd rather do like. September through to April headline and Hey, you can just your tour schedule. Months. It's on you. If you want to do festivals, mm. I think it ties back into what you're saying before about like you like the challenge of converting the audience. Mm, You've got yeah, a wide dude. variety on a festival and you do yeah. a headline tour. And there's so. more people. I, like, it is it is more inspiring the more people are there a lot of the time. You yeah. know, because it's just like, whoa, man, like I've got to be here now. There's, there's yeah. no dissociating from like, yeah. you know, when we played the download pilot, man. It was like, there's like six thousand people there. It was like the first show Jeez. back in Britain. Yeah. It was crazy. And That's like wicked. it just it was imp you know, it was impossible not to smash that the show because there was just so many people there, you know. It's such a vibe too. So many people. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Hard like, yeah. It was times. yeah. And that's the main thing, that's the one of the biggest suckish things about touring is like you very rarely get to actually see your touring friends. Fully. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. you know, you'll meet on a tour. Like like we just did this tour with Daisy Good Caskets Thornhill. Like fifteen legends, you know, and like I I love them all forever. I don't know when the hell I'll see any of them again. Really. Yeah. Because they're just all gonna be busy doing their own things and, yeah, and I'd sure. you know, I'd love to tour with them all again too. But the point I'm getting at is like I've got more chance of bumping into them at a festival, at a festival than yeah. getting the tour yeah, up, you know? Totally. Do you get excited when you see the, the lineup of a festival that you're on and you're like, who's playing? Who do we yeah, get to see? Who like, do we catch up for, with? For me I've got this rule where like it's because of the um because of the, the whole America visa thing, I, I'm, I'm just so cynical about everything now, you know? Yeah, so like, my rule is basically like, until I see a poster, it's not real for me, <laughs> you know? So like that first time you see a poster, like with the Silverstein Amity tour we just announced, it was like, whoa, like yeah. I've seen the no, poster, I'm yeah. there, like, you know? And like, we grew up listening to those bands and stuff, so it was like super surreal. We're so. saying Silverstein's your album is one of our like, albums of the year. Too. Yeah, they kill it, man. So good. They're so consistent. Like, just, just ridiculously yeah, consistent. Yeah. And I think for me, they are like a really, really and like 
I think a real important part of being in a contemporary scene is like paying attention to people and learning from them. Yeah, and, sure. and like, so I've seen and so inspire it because like, tw I'd rather be consistent for 20 years than be incredible or the best band ever for five years. Yeah. You know, like, so the fact that they're still killing it. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Props to them. I'm going to finish this off with one last question. Ooh. Favorite tour memory that you either played at or been to? F favorite live experience? Oh, okay. Um, it's tough. I, I don't want to sound like big headed or anything, but like uh, every week we have a new one with the way the way the band is right now. Like you know, playing like um, uh, like Brisbane the other day. I was just like, there's people sing along to my band in Brisbane, like yeah. you know. And then a week before, it was like there's people singing along to my band in in uh, Anaheim or whatever, you know. So like, so you know, there's there's definitely like glaring kind of moments. Um, I will say, I will say the download pilot though, because cool. it was like two years of hoping and waiting it come yeah. back. And, and I gotta be honest, as a vocalist as well, you don't know. It's it's the one instrument you can't open your case and look at. You know, so I just yeah, didn't know if I was yeah. going to turn up and even be able to sing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you, you just don't know. You just in those don't know. Situations. Yeah, and it just like, might just pop at the start. You go, well, yeah, I'm yeah, fine. yeah, and it might pop tonight. I, I, I never know. You know, <laughs> but like, I know, but like, that show was just like, and like, you know, I, I'll never forget being a part of the first, kind of the first festival back after the, yeah. the first pandemic mm, in the Renaissance over movie, a century. Baby. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It's insane. So, so good. Yeah. So man, thank you so much for joining us. It's been great to finally get to chat to you in person, and we are so stoked that you are actually here in Australia. Yeah, it's been a long time coming back. One for us, we haven't been able to have much live music. You had the UK yeah. open, nothing was open here. Aww. So to be able to, have and it's cool as well. Like I, I, someone said that we're like one of the first international bands to come back here. Fully. Really? Yeah. yeah. So it's like, it's, it's an honour to be here, you know, playing for people of Australia. Thanks, man. Thanks, Thanks, so thank so you both for being awesome. Give me one of these. Boom! Yeah, Boom. Crisp high five <laughs> or a crisp vibe. That's the program. Crisp or a high yeah, five. See you guys next time. <laughs> Peace! <laughs> Woo! Nice and legends. We got it done.